promoting a healthy environment. It's the air we breathe. Clean, safe water. Responsible management of our natural resources. We protect and restore. For a sustainable future. The environment matters. We felt that there was a need to take a holistic approach to sustainability and institutionalize it um, from the senior leadership um, as well as you know all the way down to uh, the operational level. A look at how West Virginia's two largest universities are incorporating sustainability principles into everyday campus life. Plus, we don't throw things that are valuable into our landfills. We don't waste resources, and um, and we and we try to do what's smart not just for today, but for, for our future. The DEP hands out more than $2 million in recycling grants to help communities all across the state with their recycling programs. Hello everybody and welcome to Environment Matters. I'm Greg Adolfson with the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection. For more than 20 years, the DEP has partnered with communities to start, grow, and sustain local recycling efforts through its annual recycling grant program. The DEP's Tom Aloise has more. 40 groups from 29 West Virginia counties were honored at a recent reception here at DEP headquarters. This year's grant recipients will share $2.2 million. Grants were awarded to state solid waste authorities, county commissions, municipalities, private industries, and nonprofit organizations. Since its beginning 22 years ago, the REAP program has awarded more than $33 million to programs all across the state. The program is funded through a $1 fee per ton of waste hauled to state landfills. DEP Cabinet Secretary Randy Huffman thanked the group for their efforts. I've worked with, with a lot of folks at the local level from all areas of the state, and I've seen what kind of difference that, that energetic, hardworking people that are doing the right things for the right reasons can make. Whatever it is that, that needs to be done to, to make things better, it really has to start on the ground within the communities in which you live and work. And what, what we try to do here at DEP is be partners with that. Two million dollars a year is not going to solve our recycling problems. It's not going to, it's not going to create a, a robust recycling program in and of itself. And certainly from Charleston, state government can't do that for you. Um, but you can do it and with a little bit of help and, and that's what we're doing here. Money from the DEP grant program can be used by the groups to help leverage additional grant funding so that the two million awarded this year can be the seed money for many more millions in resources. Money that can be used to pay for personnel, equipment, transportation, and perhaps most importantly education and outreach. And there's still garbage laying around, there's still trash that needs to be cleaned up, but just the mindset of our citizens. And I think it has changed. And I think it's really started with the amount of education we're doing with our, with our children. We had a lot, of, uh, a lot of school programs. We've spent a lot of time and effort to try to educate uh, the younger generation who, who are now um, you know, young adults. And uh, they just have a completely different way of, of viewing how these kinds of things are, are to be done. And it's not just from the standpoint of of not throwing your trash over the hill. That was the first uh, uh, objective, but very quickly um, our, the culture has, has transformed into that of resource management to, to include recycling, which is a you know, big part of what you all are here uh, about today, so that we, we don't throw things that are valuable into our landfills, we don't waste resources, and, um, and, we, and we try to do what's smart, not just for today, but for, for our future. A future that leads to a cleaner West Virginia. In Charleston, I'm Tom Aloise for Environment Matters. Secretary Huffman says the amount of waste entering West Virginia landfills has actually decreased significantly over the last 20 years. From over 2 million tons a year in the mid-80s to roughly 1.5 million tons annually now. Finding a place to dispose of those old televisions, computers, and tablets in an environmentally responsible way has always been a challenge. Since 2011, it's been illegal to dispose of what's called a covered electronic device. 
basically anything with a video screen bigger than four inches, into a West Virginia landfill, and that's where electronics recycling events like the one held recently here at DEP headquarters can help. The DEP Sarah Alford joins us with details. Greg, you'll find them gathering dust in basements, garages, and back rooms all across the state. Those once cutting edge electronics made obsolete by the newest, latest technology. They came in cars, vans, and trucks. Opportunity to get rid of some hard drives and monitors and printers <laughs> that we've had in our basement for ages. A steady stream of old tube televisions, obsolete computers, and all manner of worn out, broken, unwanted electronics. Large, and not so large. I need some help. It's all he had, but he, had, he was kind enough not to just throw it out in the environment. He brought it here where to get disposed of properly. We'll take all these trailers back to Cincinnati, take it to our processing center. We'll put it through the uh, shredders, shred the equipment, send metals in one direction, aluminum in another direction, gold and uh, precious metals into another direction. They all go to smelters. Jim Cordes is with 2TRG, the recycling company that's handling the disposal from today's event. The monitors, we have to cut the glass, send leaded glass to a smelter that is uh, certified to process the lead in the glass. Uh, clean glass will send to a different smelter. Um, Green boards that are in computers, we'll take that and uh, smelt that down to get the metals off of that. We're one of the few companies in the area that is, are certified to be an e-steward, and that's a national organization that is above and beyond EPA regulated uh, recyclers. So we make sure that nothing gets exported over to other countries, nothing goes into landfills, so everything is reclaimed as the equipment. And that's important because these devices contain things like mercury, lead, and other hazardous materials. Things that, if not properly handled, could escape into the environment. We know for a fact that they're going to the right place. They're going to the proper places. They're not going over a hillside. Turnout for this year's event was down from last year, but organizers say that's not a bad thing. State law actually requires waste haulers to pick up televisions and computers and landfill operators to hold them until they can be hauled off by a qualified electronics recycler. Although that sometimes involves a surcharge. And organizers say many consumers are taking advantage of that. Greg, these free events are still quite popular. About 30,000 pounds of electronics were hauled off from this one. For Environment Matters, I'm Sarah Alford. Thanks, Sarah. The state has set up a website to help consumers, waste haulers, and landfill operators navigate the process. You can find it by searching e-waste West Virginia. We also have a link to it on the Environment Matters Google Plus page. One of the best ways to reduce the amount of material that goes into our landfills is by recycling, but that's not the only benefit. As we first told you back in August, schools in Raleigh County are turning their trash into cash. The program has been so successful, it's become a model for the rest of the state, and we thought it was worth another look. The DEP's Mike Huff has their story. The Recycling Center in Raleigh County is a busy place, due in no small part to the steady stream of material from 37 recycling bins placed at schools throughout the county. Started in 2001, the program has grown from 11 schools and 47 tons of recyclables to more than 30 schools and nearly 400 tons this past school year. St. Francis School in Beckley was one of the original schools. Karen Wynn is the principal. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you decide to get involved with, uh, with the program? Well, have you met Sherry Hunter? She's very <laughs> persuasive. Sherry Hunter is Director of Education for the Raleigh County Solid Waste Authority and, frankly, a force of nature. She says the numbers have exceeded even her most optimistic estimates. We knew, we knew that we were on the verge of something that was going to evolve and become much, much bigger. So now I'm going to fast forward. In 12 school years, we have cumulatively recycled 3,700 tons of recycling. And schools have earned $169,000 for what would have been in the trash. The schools recycle newspaper, cardboard, office paper, aluminum cans, and plastics. Each classroom has a recycling bin, and students are taught what goes in and what doesn't. 
you know, your homework that you didn't want to take home to mom doesn't necessarily go in there. But any paper and tear down boxes and things like that, they do. We also do plastic bottles because the kids often have those kind of things. But the program is about more than recycling and financial benefits. It's teaching a life lesson. It's part of our character education. We're citizens of the earth, so we are stewards of the earth. So we're trying to get across to the students to be respectful of our environment. And part of that is by not littering, by not um, cluttering the, you know, the um, landfill with things that don't need to be there. So it's important for us educators to make sure that children embrace that and inspire them, that they can do something individually. You can make a difference one little milk jug at a time, one little piece of paper at a time, because then you've kind of started that's your behavior modification starting off when you're real, real young. And you go, oh, ooh, I've been a part of recycling. Oh my word, how long have I been a part of recycling for all of my life? So it becomes second nature. And that message is getting through. It's very important because unless we want our earth to become a giant trash pile, then we need to recycle. We recycle at my house, definitely. So and I think every person, even like if they have to like drive like 17 miles to get to where they're going to cycle. Everyone should recycle. In Beckley, I'm Mike Huff for Environment Matters. The program also helps folks who live outside Beckley where curbside recycling is not an option. They can and do bring their recyclables to the school, which helps their local schools to earn more money. Organizers say it helps get the whole community involved. Coming up, we looked at recycling first, and we've let everything expand out from that point. A look at how West Virginia college campuses are getting greener. We'll check in with Marshall and WVU, the state's two biggest universities, and see how the message of sustainability is becoming an integral part of campus life. Plus, how switching to more energy efficient Christmas decorations can make a difference you can see and feel. Those stories and more when Environment Matters continues.